It mm. helps us as police. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic. Why? Maybe, hey, why do you panic? The way, the way you, uh, uh, Papa, you know Papa. <laughs> Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. <laughs> okay. And of course, when he puts his fangs into you, you certainly feel it. I think it pretty much done his bite. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Has born Allah wa Neem al Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Wednesday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and for those who take the trouble to share the link and, and with family and friends and your acquaintances, thank you very much indeed. For those who knock off work in Europe and in other places just to come and watch Johnny's by those who make time, set the alarm, wake up in the middle of your sleep to come and watch and go back, thank you very much indeed. We don't take your commitment and your comments and your uh, uh, concentration on Johnny's by for granted at all. This morning, I am tempted to tell you that you have to always salute your enemies and those who hate you. Oh, yes. Those who hate you and those you think are your haters or your enemies, you have to spend time to salute them. You know why? They are the only people who think that you are better than them, so they hate you. Mm. So this time, don't, 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 don't be angry at your enemies. Like them, because they are the only people that think that you are better off. You are better than them. That's why they hate you. Nothing more, nothing less. So like them. So you see all those people who actually come, they watch Johnny's back and they say, I hate this guy, I don't like him, it's okay. The things he... Then somebody would ask, them, ah, but the things the guy is saying, and the things, the truth, yeah, yeah, the things are the truth, but I don't like him because he, he's always, you no, know, no, no, no. I am grateful for your life. Please join the stream and share, like and share. The hashtag is Johnny's Bite. Mm, Johnny's Bite back with viewers be brave. Now, as a country, is it not interesting that as we speak, Galamse is still going on and everybody has taken our minds off Galamse. We are drinking mercury, cyanide, lead, chlorine, alum, Put together, we're drinking all with the mud and, and the dirt. We're drinking everything. And everybody is pretending that Galamse is no longer a big conversation. Have you, have you come to the realization? You see how, how vulnerable we are as a people when red herrings are thrown at us the way we pick the red herrings? Yes, yes, that's what we have become as a country. And today is the President's Day of Birth, just like me. We're Wednesday bonds, and big ups to all Wednesday bonds. I remember when organized labor met the president. No, disorganized labor met the president. The president said he needed some time to be able to deal with the Galamse issue because the Galamse is a national emergency. The Galamse is a national security issue. The Galamse is a very thorny issue. The Galamse is, is an issue of life and death. The Galamse is an issue that can give you kidney, liver, and all other complications. The, the Galamse is, is something that is going to hurt the future and our generations that are after us. The president says, I need time to think about it. Now, ask yourself, since the president asked for time, and up until now, has he not had enough time to make a bold solution known to the people now i'm asking you the president asked for time you supported him and said let's give him time some of you even said let's postpone the fight against galamse until after the elections now the time that the president asked for is the time not enough have we not had enough time we have had a whole month of october is that not enough time one full month to take an, a decision on an emergency that, that affects the very lives of the people because w without water, we are all dead. And if your lungs are polluted, the food you eat is poison. And if you use that same water to, to wash your skin, you know that the skin being the largest organ in the body, you are actually, you are actually endangering your life. 
So the president asks for time. And I'm asking, the time that the president asks for, is the time not up yet? Has he not had enough time? Or maybe the issue of Galamse doesn't matter to the president that much. So, yeah, business as usual. Because this morning, there are people who are getting ready, if they are not there already, who are doing Galamse. Over the night, there are people who did Galamse. This afternoon, if you go, you find people who are doing Galamse. Now, the question is, the, so I told you that they were setting up the Ghana Armed Forces up for public ridicule. The soldiers who we claim we marshaled immediately, I told you, we will soon put a bunch of jokers together to say we have arrested people and we'll put them before the cameras. I told you. And my mouth didn't even fall, as they say in the local parlance. I didn't even finish speaking. And that action took place. The soldiers and the people, we said, oh, they are the tax force. We have put them on the water. They are stopping Galaxy, blah, blah, blah. Adam Sremsai has shown you that as soon as they come and leave, the people return to the very same Galamse sites. So are we serious about fighting Galamse? Are we very serious about... Uh, the Boko is a, a very important conversation. But you saw how swiftly the president organized a national security meeting, chaired it, and made a definite decision that put the curfew back on the people, extend it. Hmm? The president is alive. Oh. He has asked for more time to deal with Galamse, which affects everybody in this country, apart from those who import water into this country. He asked for more time. Organized labor, they, they, they melted before the president. They were supposed to be the last hope of the Republic of Ghana. They melted. Some say there was inducement. I don't know about it. But that's what their members are saying. That their members feel disappointed in their leadership. They gave an ultimatum. The ultimatum uh, elapsed. Then they gave another one. And then they gave another one. And then, then the president asked for time. Now, that time that the president asked for, I'm asking this morning, has the time not elapsed? Have we not, has the president not have, had enough time to consult with his council of state, his uh, party elders, whoever he has to consult with? And at this time, it's been a full month. It tells you that Galamse, unlike the National Cathedral, is not a priority of priorities for Nana Dodankwe Kufuado William. It's not. It's not, it's not. I told you a few weeks back that J uh, SHS1 students, and we keep talking about free as I told you that we will be adding the new numbers. You wait this week. When the form ones go to school, right, you will hear new figures about free SHS, but nobody will talk about quality. We'll only be talking about quantity for political expediency and for political benefit and advantage. Nobody will be talking about the quality. And parents are going through it. You, the portals are open, you do self-placement, and in two days, you are supposed to cough out the money and take your children to school. And everybody is quiet. When we were in school, our parents had a breathing space for about three, four months to plan for a new academic year. They would do their own bala bala to be able to buy everything you need for the school. They'll buy your books, they'll buy new uh, kambu for you, they'll buy a new bag, they'll buy new... That, that's, what, that's where the term new wele came from. When you go to school and the new new year, everybody has new wele, a new bag, a new shoe, a new kambu, a kambu, no, something, a new socks, something, a new uniform. That's where the term new wele came from. It's not for Gen Zs. Today, what is the situation? Somebody writes an exam. Before the exams, it, 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 the exam paper scripts are even marked for them to know that you have passed or failed. They say the person has been promoted to the next class the same day. Let's say today, Wednesday, I sit for my paper. By 12 p.m., I'm done with my paper. They say, hey, you, are, you are informed too. So how, what a kind of assessment went into it? What kind of assessment went into it? And then now you're going to bring in the form once. And the boarding the board schools will tell you that when the children come, they spend time to do some cleaning. The current form ones we are going to form to in this very last term, I'm told spend about just three weeks in school. So how are we educating the next generation to be able to take over the reins of this country and to compete effectively and efficiently with other, other people in other countries and, and as global citizens? How are we doing that? When you ask the questions, they say, why are you asking questions? But these are very, very weighty issues. 
national conversation that might be had. I'm asking the president has had enough time to think about Galamsey. What do you see, Mr. President? What is your decision? The Ghana Education Service, the Ministry of Education, is this the best you could have done for our children and their, their, their learners and their parents? I'm asking questions. Now, the Chief Justice of the Republic, her ladyship, Justice Tokun, yesterday there was a statement from, from the, the Office of the Chief Justice and, and said that some courts up there in Borga and other places has had to be shut because of the security issues there. And then I keep asking myself, okay, so let's read it so nobody says I'm putting something on anybody. From the judicial secretary to the C distribution, it's, and it's down there. Carbon copy to the Honorable Lady Chief Justice. Subject closure of courts dated the 29th of October 2024. The attention of the Honorable Lady Chief Justice has been drawn to concerns expressed by lawyers and other stakeholders about the current situation in Boku and its environs. In order to ensure the safety and security of judges, staff, lawyers, and court users, the Honorable Lady Chief Justice has ordered the closure of the following courts with immediate effect until further notice. High Court Bogatanga, Circuit Court Bogatanga, District Court Bogatanga, District Court Zwarungu, District Court Zebela, District Court Garu, District Court Bongo. Registrars are uh, to keep all assets of the court in proper custody and all staff are to stay safe. Please accept the compliments of the Honorable Lady Chief Justice, Justice Sarah Pamela, CA Cranting Justice of the Appeal Court, signed this. And just two days ago, I was telling you that, look, we only talk about Boko when we talk about chieftaincy conflict. Honorable Kletus Avoka says, there's no chieftaincy conflict. It's just political undertones that are there. Stephen Asawa Bati says, oh, there are no political undertones. And then you ask yourself, ah, but all the money that we've been voting into Boko to go and ensure that there's peace, what, what have we gained from If you keep making a certain investment, kind of investment, and you're not getting the kind of results you're looking for, don't you change your strategy? And just two days ago, I was telling you that, look, there are Ghana water staff in, in, in Boku. There are Netco staff in Boku, right? There are staff of Vodafone, MTN. There are staff of Highway Authority. There are staff of all the institutions you have in your region where there's peace and calm. Do you find some in Boku? How are they surviving? The teachers, the nurses, the doctors. Today, the chief, the, the lady chief, the chief justice says, look, we can't continue like this. Let's, please stay at home. Let's be safe. Will other institutions also crack the whip and say that? And yesterday, when somebody saw this, somebody says, oh, let's be careful so that these places that have been mentioned, these uh, Bo, uh, Zwarungu, Garu, Zebela, Boga, let's be careful so that these places, we don't have a repetition of what happened at Santro Kofi, Akpafu, Likpe, and Lolobi. And there are cases before the courts, so, where people want closure. There are cases before the court where people want closure. There are people on remand. Yeah, yeah, there are people on remand. They appear and the judge says, oh, please. The prosecution makes an argument that, oh, he will interfere with investigation, da, 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 so remand. Now the courts are shut. What happens to those people? Those people who are on remand, what happens to them? It has implications on all manner of things. Can you imagine if you're arrested in the course of, of this time when the courts are not working? What will happen to you? Will you be kept in there forever? Will you be granted bail? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm as confused as you are. That's why I'm asking the questions. And I hope that somebody comes to answer the questions. So the conflict in Boku is a big issue that we must not toy with. And you ask the national security you ask the, uh, the security apparatus, you ask them, did they not see the individual who has gone there, who has brought this whole noise and, and this whole confusion and people dying? Did they not know, did they not pick intelligence that this was going to happen? The women in Boku, they are not happy. Yesterday, they burned car ties. They, were, they burned their teeth. They, they are angry. And yesterday, I told you about women and children. They burnt car ties. They, for the first time, they went on a demonstration and they spoke up. Show the images. Let's see the images. They spoke up. The women, they spoke up. They were, they are angry because 
they are the, they are the mercy of all the nonsense that is happening. And I will put it mildly like that. They are at, at the mercy of all that is happening in Boko. Why? 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 Let's hear the women. One of the ladies, one of the, the leaders of the group. And these are women, whether they are from this tribe or that tribe, they are united. And they were on the streets asking questions. Like, let's listen to the lady. There was one of them who, who spoke with uh, a correspondent, Castro Senyala. Let's listen to her. And, and you see, the, the, you, can, you can actually tell. Uh, let me leave this under it. You can tell the pain. They're speaking from a position of pain. They are speaking from a position of pain. All the monies that we vote, we vote 10 million, then we throw it at Boku, 10 million, then we throw it at Boku. What has been the benefit and essence of the 10 million we keep throwing at Boku? How has it helped? Do we need to change the strategy? Let's hear the lady. It's severe. And it's from, it's, and the, the government is supporting one side. That is what we know. The government is supporting the Mapuses and leaving the Kusasis. Meanwhile, we are all right voting for the old one government. There are MP uh, Kusasi members who are voting for MPP. So the killing of Boku is very bad. And the killing of Bindu uh, Wale Wale is very bad. It's very bad. As far as they are, as far as they are imposing yeah. curfew in Boku, there should be curfew in Wale Wale. Wale. Can you government can you come and his government, I could give us a break. Give us a break. Give us a break. No, 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 no peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. is here with the help of the government. But they are saying from the local government who has brought him inside. So we don't know what is happening in Boku again. Well, the women have spoken, and I'm sure that in our traditional setting, where there's confusion and the women speak, usually there's peace and calm. I hope that those who have the authority and those who have the mandate to take certain decisions that will make sure that Boko is quiet and peace and calm again, uh, peaceful and calm again, so that people can return to work and earn an honest living. They're tired, honestly, they're tired. Four years, four years, Curfew today, curfew tomorrow. For you, how? Bring me down to Accra. Let's go to the University of Ghana Medical Center. Yesterday, they wrote a love letter. And I'd like us to read the love letter together. This is from the University of Ghana Medical Center. October 29, RF, UGMC dash ORTHO ortho dash V1.92.10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
uh, East Legon, where two teenage girls lost their lives. One of them, I'm told, is the only daughter and only granddaughter of her parents and grandparents. And this involves the son of a known prophet in this country, Prophet Salifu Amwako, and that's his son, Elrat Salifu Amwako. Now, I don't want to remind the families who have lost their beloved of their pain. But this is to the University of Ghana Medical Center and to Dr. Salu. May it not be that this, as the public are saying, is a certain cover-up. Because you see, the families of the two girls are looking for closure. They are in pain. I'm sure that you've seen the interviews that the families have granted the media. They say they want closure. They want justice to be done. And, and I am not questioning your professionalism in any way. I'm just saying that the families are looking for closure. And yesterday, if I'm sure that you have social media pages and people who do your social media for you, if you had gone on social media, the sentiment's been expressed that this could be a cover-up or trying to buy time. I don't want to believe that. I am just saying that, please, as soon as possible, if it is, let's get closure for the families so that they can have their peace of mind. There are people who have suggested very brute things, but I'm not interested in those. I'm just asking for closure for the families. And as of now, you have said that the boy is not fit to appear for interrogation. That's fine. But when he is fit, let us also know, and in good time, so the families can have closure. Because I, 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 I come in contact with people who have... Um, who have gone through such situations. And sometimes when they speak to you and express their pain, you feel the pain even though you are not in the story. And as a journalist, you're not supposed to be in the story, but sometimes you feel the pain. And I'm coming from that position of pain to ask that question that let's do all we can as quickly as possible to get the families to have closure so that at least the pain can go away. I agree to you, University of Ghana Medical Center. Now, take me to Parliament. Things are happening in Parliament. Mr. Speaker, is that a question in Parliament? And quickly, let's, let's look at the document from Parliament and then we can wrap up. The two, yes, there's a query. Let's look, put the document up, please. Now, this is a memo. It's a query. Office of Chamber Reporting, memo. Editor of Debate, Chamber Reporting. To Senior Executive Officer Thomas Busumpim, dated the 21st of October 2024. Query. Person to Regulations 51C and, uh, and um, 51C and E of the Parliamentary Service Staff Regulations 2019 CI118, explain why disciplinary action should not be instituted against you for photocopying the draft ANZAT of Thursday, 17th October 2024, making same available to some other persons without authorization. Your response should be submitted to the editor of debates, chamber reporting by 4 p.m. on Wednesday, that's today, the 23rd of October. Now, that's last week, 23rd of October, 2024. Now, Mr. Speaker is asking a senior executive officer a deep question. Now, here's what Franklin Kujo also had to say, and I'm just quickly running through them. Franklin Kujo said this. Franklin Kujo is the president of Imani Africa. He says, folks, I tend to see reason in the release the speaker's lawyer study sorry at law are seeking to correct the Supreme Court in the case of the vacancies uh, MPs. This same Supreme Court told us, Sandro Kofi, Akpafu, Likpe, and Lolobi to go to the High Court to start our SAL election case when we had come to them to deal expeditiously with our rights that were violated and had the highest risk of being violated if it didn't step in. They threw us out. Guess what? We went to the High Court and after three years, the High Court said it had no jurisdiction to hear our case. What was so special about the four constituencies whose MPs had abandoned in their hearts that the Supreme Court can even entertain an ex-party motion and rule on that. Why didn't the plaintiffs go to the court, high court where they must legally start from? Why didn't the Supreme Court rely on the same principle as applied against the Santro Kofi, Akpafu, Likpi, and Lolobi to these four? This is clearly a gangster system. And that's what Franklin Kujo of Imani Africa, that's what he thinks here. Now, 
in wrapping up this morning's conversation, there are comments that have been made about the death of Madame Ikea Donko, and we empathize and sympathize with the Ghana Freedom Party, of which she was flag bearer. Questions have been asked, and I've seen that Article 50, Clause 4 have been quoted, sections or regulations uh, of the CI um, 2020 in, in, that, that runs our elections, 127 has, has also been quoted. Now, everybody is looking at the Electoral Commission to see the decision that they take and the finality that they bring. Because, you know, the NPP's Dr. Baumia is comfortable at number one. The NDC's John Mahama is comfortable at, at number eight. Ikea Dompo was happy at number three. Alan Tremantin is happy at number 13. Three, Cheddar is happy at number 12. Two, and many others. If, for want of a better scenario, Ikea Donko's party decide that we do not have a replacement for Ikea Donko, so we are pulling out of the elections. What happens? Is the election commission going to do a realignment and keep Dr. Bamiya at number one and just push the others up? Or will they have to do a reballoting? And what happens to the materials that have already been printed, breaking the eight, uh, holding the eight, stopping the eight, or your number one, all those things? What happens to them? And this is novel because it has never happened before. But everybody is watching the Electoral Commission because yesterday, the Electoral Commission made us aware that they had actually started the printing of the ballot sheet and they were almost finished with the printing of the ballot sheets. So what happens? Because now, if you look at the provisions of uh, Article 50, Clause 4, it talks about a 25-day period within which... You know, and then it talks about the period before the 25-day period. As it stands now, we are before the period of the 25-day period. So the 10-day period that the GFP would have been allowed have, after they had informed the Electoral Commission to make a nomination, it still, it still applies in this matter. But then the question is, everybody is watching the Electoral Commission. What would they do? What will the Electoral Commission really, really do? Would they have a reballoting session? Or will we just push the numbers up? I leave it to your good judgment. But good morning to you, Madam Jim Mensa. Good morning to you, uh, Dr. Bosma Asari. Good morning to you, Mr. Samotiti. And good morning to you all, all. Everybody is watching you right now. And the whole country is watching you. And people are saying what they want to say. But I'm saying we, we are just watching you. The whole country. Please note these numbers down. Call me after this break. 055-924. 2717 and 055 691 0154. 055 924 2717 and 055 691 0154. See you shortly after this break. Have a good, 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 good morning here on 3FM 92.7.